The study design is very important, and often researchers struggle with setting up their study design. Can you give nurse leaders some helpful tips on that? Again, it is very difficult to um, do research on a part-time basis, and yet for many of us that's what we have to do. We can't know everything about every design, and in addition, with all of the statistical modeling that can now be done, there are designs that you've never even heard of because they're not in textbooks which are a couple years behind. So if you if you have a particular question that you want to answer, you want to make sure you've got the design correct. You know that old saying, garbage in, garbage out. Well, you can spend a lot of money doing garbage and all you get in response is garbage. And that's a waste of everyone's time, not to mention the money that you were given to do the the topic. So the best thing to do, again, is to look for someone who has expertise who can answer that question. Sometimes you may be reading a, a journal and come across a study that's well described that does exactly what you want to do but on a slightly different topic. And you may be able to find, to, to uh, model your design on that article. But even then, no article gives you all of the nitty gritty details that you may need to know. So what I would encourage you to do, again, is to go to the resources, either in your own institution or in a local university or college. And if you need to pay a fee, that should be, you can negotiate that with the institution. Sometimes you can negotiate it based on if you get funded or not. But you need to know that you can't do everything yourself. And so don't feel like you should be able to. If you need help, get it. If I'm doing something I'm not used to, I call, you know, a statistician. If I need statistical help, I go to a statistician. I don't sit with a stats book and try to figure it out because I know that that's going to be out of date. I go to somebody who is in the field doing the kind of work that I want to do to get the help that I need. What important facts do nurse leaders need to know about quantitative research? Well, there are a whole variety of different kinds of quantitative models, just as there are a whole variety of qualitative models of research. And um, you need to think about quantitative research as measuring something. So if you're looking for information that's going to come back in numbers, quantitative research is what you want to do. If you're looking at the differences between things, um, if you want to know uh, whether a particular type of knee um, prosthetic is better than another one, for example, you would have to figure out what information you need to show that type A is better than type B and then have a tool to measure that exact factor. And that's one of the hardest things in terms of measuring um, in quantitative studies. You know, if you're going to wallpaper a room, say you, wanted, you decided you wanted to wallpaper this room, you would get a tape measure out and you would measure it because you don't want to be left with six extra rolls of wallpaper and you don't want to be left with needing one more because it's a different, going to be a different batch and you won't know that it matches perfectly. So what you need to do is measure exactly to wallpaper your room. The same thing is true in terms of research. You need to know exactly what it is you're going to do and have a measure that is going to be consistent and usable. So if you want to do weights, you're going to have to get a scale that you can calibrate and recalibrate regularly to make sure it's measuring accurately. If you are trying to measure a quality in a person, Finding a measure that fits exactly is one of the hardest things that you have to do because you can't just take a measure of X and apply it to Y because you're not going to know if it's going to work reliably. You can't just make up a set of questions and think, well, these will answer, these, I'll, I'll make up my own instrument and I'll know whether this works or not because instruments have to be tested for reliability and validity. If you just make up questions, you have no idea whether those questions are reliable or not. You don't know whether this, those individuals will give you the same answer in another month. You don't know whether certain questions are more useful than others. So what you really need to find is an instrument that is already in existence, that has good statistical data, that measures those kinds of qualities like social support or satisfaction with care, whatever it is you're trying to measure that it's reliable and valid and has good data behind it. 
those are very difficult things to get sometimes, and sometimes you can't find one for the particular variable that you need. Um, sometimes you can find things that approximate it, or you'll put two or three instruments together to kind of sum up what you're doing. But getting your measures is a difficult piece. On the other hand, once you've kind of got the proposal done and your subjects, it often goes fairly quickly to do qualitative research. The numbers go into a computer, somebody crunches them for you, and you get your data. So that is an advantage to quantitative, is once you've got that proposal honed down, and you, as long as you have a good subject pool, it should go fairly smoothly. Thank you. I know how important that information is to researchers. Now, could you please share some facts with us about qualitative research? Certainly. Qualitative research is not just everything else, and that's how some people kind of think about it. Um, I've had uh, students, for example, think that um, a, a correlational study was qualitative because they didn't know what else to think about it, or that um, a clinical arti article was describing a qualitative study just because they talked to patients. A qualitative study has a rigorous methodology, just as a quantitative study does, but it looks at things in a different way. Quanti qualitative studies are trying to get from the participants what it is that is important to them about the topic. In a quantitative study, you, the researcher, makes that decision. I think social support is the thing that I really need to find out about from these patients. That's a quantitative uh, notion. A qualitative notion is, I don't know what these individuals need, I need to ask them and find out. And so what you get back from a qualitative study is typically data that is in words. And sometimes it's not exactly words, sometimes it's videos, sometimes it's written, but it's more, it's, your responses, your answers are going to be more in terms of words than in terms of numbers. Every qualitative protocol has a specific way that it's done, and you can't just go in and take pieces of one and put them with pieces of another and not come out again with garbage. You have to follow the protocol exactly. I was reviewing a study uh, recently, and um, the, the only, they called it grounded theory, and the only thing that was in there that was grounded theory was how they said they were going to do the analysis, but really didn't do it that way. So they really didn't follow any particular kind of qualitative uh, model, so it was not a very well done study. The other thing I want to emphasize in terms of both of these is with any kind of research that you're doing, don't forget you have to go to the Institutional Review Board or whatever it's called in your facility. You cannot do research on human subjects or animals without going through a review process. Now, you may get told because what you're doing is simply with the staff that it's more, that it's not uh, required, that it's considered exempt, but you still have to go to the IRB and ask that question. Do not assume that you don't need IRB approval. There's a, a simple application form in most places. You fill it out, send it in, and then the, you will be told whether it needs a full review or it's exempt from review or they can expedite it. And uh, a lot of nursing research gets expedited, but not all of it. When you, when you write up your IRB protocol, that's exactly how you have to do the research. You can't make changes without going back through the IRB. And so you have to keep that in mind. Typically, the IRB proposal is done while you're waiting to hear about funding. Because a lot of times, when you, when you hear about funding, they'll want you to start fairly quickly, and you won't have time to wait to go through that IRB process. So please don't forget to contact your institutional review board. You may need several IRB approvals. I've done studies where I've been in a couple of different places, and I've needed you the university IRB approval and the two or three hospitals to approve it in addition. And sometimes that takes a while to get done. So um, the best thing is to start it as soon as you've submitted your proposal for funding. Would you please share with us your expert opinion on outcomes and intervention research because this is really a hot topic in the practice setting today and I know sometimes controversial. 
Well, I think that uh, one of the things that, that is difficult is that the federal government has essentially made a mandate. Um, that research that's being done is done to produce better outcomes for patients uh, in terms of health. And so they are specifically looking for intervention research that improves outcomes. And they're not willing to fund things that are not uh, geared in that direction. However, you may be able to get funding for a particular kind of research that's not based on, t on patient care in other kinds of foundations. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to do what you want to do, you just may need to go to a different piece. But it makes sense to me that we should be focused on improving outcomes of patient care if we're asking people to pay for, certain, to provide us with funding for certain kinds of research. And we certainly want to make sure that the interventions that are being done advance the science as opposed to doing the same old thing. The other kind of research that's very hot right now is translational research. And translational research is really aimed at taking what the scientists do at the bench or in the lab, or even in very controlled studies with a particular population, and seeing if that works in other settings. So the university hospital does this big cancer study. But can that, can that same study be done in a different setting? Can it be done in a less, um, I don't want to use the word less, in a smaller facility that perhaps doesn't have university connections and work? Can what the bench scientist do, do, can what that bench scientist does in the lab, can it be translated to community practice? And if it can't be, then it doesn't have a lot of value. And that part of that step for many years has not been properly taken care of. So making sure that we in fact move science from the lab or from the uh, tertiary care center out is a very important part of research. And it's a very important part for nurses to do. So it's a good way to think about um, looking at where you want to start. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to um, interview with us, and uh, we really value your um, expert opinion. Well, thank you. It's been fun. Thank you.